You've seen me make ornaments with felt, and you've seen me make cute cactus with felt, but can I illustrate with felt? Let's find out. I thought it would be really cool to make illustrations out of felt, so I bought these cute little, I think these are made for needle felting, but they would be really cute to frame our felt illustrations. So I bought a small one, a medium one, and a large one. Okay, I'm super excited, so let's get started on our small one. It's so tiny, let's just zoom in here a little bit and start sketching out some ideas. Let's just go ahead and trace and make sure we have the proper size for what we are going to be drawing. For now, let's do a Dennis portrait. This is the Dennis plushie that is on order right now. There is only 200 plushies left, so if you want to grab yourself a cute little Dennis plushie, get one while you can, because once he's gone, he's gone. Links, of course, are in the description. Okay, can we sketch a Dennis already? Let's just get into it. So I'm not sure how zoomed in or zoomed out I want to be on Dennis, but he's a very simple character, so I think this will be easy enough to do. If I really wanted to make it small, oh my gosh, and if I wanted to include the entirety of Dennis's body, I suppose we could. So as cute and lovely as the full body illustration would be, I think if I want to have a full set of all three of my characters, I think the portrait would be really cute. So I'm going to go with the portrait for our tiny frame. Let's get to cutting and measuring and um, doing things. Before I got into creating this adorable portrait of Dennis, I knew I wanted a cute but simple and colorful background for his portrait. Dennis is a black and white character and I knew I wanted to add a little bit of a pop of color to his portrait. So I went through my quilting squares, which is basically just a sampling of adorable patterns. And I found this amazing earthy green polka dot, which was perfect for the background of his portrait. And then I got to cutting out all the little pieces. I should be used to working with a lot of teeny tiny little felt pieces at this point. The majority of my sewing, especially with felt, goes into my Christmas ornaments, which are fairly small. So there's a lot of tiny little details that you have to keep up and cutting them and working around and just being very gentle with. But I don't know if it's something I'll ever get used to because it's just so delicate and I have such big sausage fingers. I'm heavy handed, but I do enjoy sewing and creating this little portrait of Dennis was, it was pretty fun. I think it came together really nicely. So cutting out all the pieces and sewing them together was pretty normal. It's nothing out of the ordinary. Like I said, a very similar process to my ornaments. So this teeny tiny little portrait was nothing I wasn't used to. And honestly, you could probably turn this into an ornament. Just tie a little string on it and there you go, a little ornament. Turn your characters, your friends, your family into a cute little portrait with felt and it's a perfect Christmas gift. But for now we have this adorable portrait of Dennis. I think it turned out really cute. It's simple, it's colorful. And for the back, as much as I really do like that raw edge material look coming out from the embroidery hoop, I decided to sew a plain white piece of material on it, mainly because of the raw felt pieces coming out. And there you go, our little Dennis portrait. <laughs> Okay, let's get to sketching our medium sized ring. While at the craft store picking up these rings, I actually saw this quilting square that looked a lot like, I guess, a watercolor wash, but I thought it would be really interesting to use it as the background for an illustration, and it kind of looks like a space background. So with that in mind, I thought we could do something like an alien, or a spaceship, or a spaceman, or maybe even some sort of alien planet. So let's see, let's really play with shapes. 
I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could get some crazy detail with a felt illustration, but you guys know me, I like to play around with simple shapes and exaggerations. Oh, you know, just a normal spacesuit with all of your buttons and things on it, cause that's, that's what spacesuits do. All right, so he's just floating here, but what's happening? Maybe, maybe he's encountered an alien. Okay, let's see. I also want to put maybe like his home planet in the background so we can have like Earth or something that looks like Earth and we can have like a moon floating around it. Uh, how does that look? Is that cute? We have our spaceman bear floating in space with a ghost alien. You see the planet in the background, the spaceship. Wow, this is ambitious. Wish me luck. All right. Okay, so looking back at the sketch, it doesn't seem that ambitious. I mean, wait until you see the large ring because that's when I get ambitious. Oh my goodness. But for someone who hasn't done more with felt than just a few little details on an ornament, I was, I was a little intimidated. There's just a lot of layering and detailing and a lot more felt than I'm used to, but I was super excited to get into this one because we were leaving just a simple character and going into something with a little bit more to it. It wasn't necessarily a full background considering it is just space, but because we had a couple of characters and some background elements, we had a story to tell here and I was excited and nervous about what it was going to turn out like. So cutting out all of the pieces was as usual, but like I said, it's not just a simple ornament anymore. We've got arms and legs and a body and different overlapping elements and things were getting so busy and I was terrified. So I did something that I have never done before with my sewing. I used tape to hold all these little tiny pieces in place. Now felt isn't the most sturdy material. It can definitely be fragile if you aren't careful with it. Looking back on it, I don't know why I didn't just pin things in place. That's normally what I do when I sew. You just, you put a needle in there and you hold it down. I guess I just thought that a piece of tape would be more convenient and it wasn't as good as a needle, but you know, it, it, it did its job. So once all of the main pieces of felt were sewn down, I honestly looked at this piece and thought, this, this is kind of boring and I'm kind of scared of the outcome. But once I started to add all of the needlework and details, it really came together so well. His little face is adorable. The stars in the galaxy turned out so cute. I am seriously impressed with how well that purple watercolor sort of material worked. It looks so good. It looks just like a space. The technique I use to add all the stars in the galaxy is called a French knot and it's something that I've never been able to do with my sewing. I've tried it in the past. I could never quite figure it out but thanks to YouTube I can now look up tutorials and I use this opportunity to practice that knot and it eventually it, it looks better over time especially in the next illustration but for this one they are quite sloppy but I was really proud of myself for learning a new technique through about this process so good job me. As you can see I did end up cutting a few details out from the original sketch. I just felt like things were a little too cramped, a little too busy, and I do like this more simple look better. I'm sure you guys aren't surprised. And for the back instead of a white piece of material I cut out a circle of felt and I think that actually worked out a lot better. And there it is! to our big boy. We are gonna have to zoom out for this one. Oh my goodness. This is a 12 inch hoop and it is massive. So let's get a really cool sketch of like a background, something colorful, something fun, lots of layers. Let's figure it out. Okay, so what sort of background do we want? Well, I would like to include 
lots of bushes. Maybe we can have like a stream in the background that is flowing towards us. Hopefully I'm not being too ambitious with this felt illustration. I'm feeling a little scared, but I'm sure we're gonna have fun with it. And then for the top, like I said, I wanted to have a lot of details down here and maybe fewer details on the top, but I wanted to create something a little abstract, something fun with layers. So at first I was thinking maybe just like a plain sky with clouds, that would be fun. But what if we did like mountain ranges that layered into each other? I'm gonna go for this really interesting layering of mountains in the background. I think that would look really cool. And we can even put clouds in between the mountains to show that they're, they're really big and the clouds are in between the mountains. I think that would look really cool. Okay, so I do really like how there's a bunch of details at the bottom and at the top. It's a little more simple, a little bit more interesting in a sense that there's like layers and stuff. So. I'm terrified to start this giant felt illustration, but I'm excited. So let's get into cutting and layering and wish me luck. Oh boy, was I feeling ambitious for this one. I started cutting out the mountains and I was feeling confident. I thought the layering looked really cool, but once I started to get into the foreground and the midground, I realized I had maybe tackled more than I could really accomplish. I bit off more than I could chew, let's just say that. So obviously the illustration is very similar to our sketch, but I did cut out a lot of the details, especially the characters. It was just a little too much, but I do really like the way this illustration turned out and I'm not mad about it. So to no one's surprise, the layering mountains in the background, they're just so simple, they're colorful, they're shapely, I love it. They are my favorite part of this whole illustration. They just look so cool. And the original river that I was going to have going through this illustration, I actually turned into a, like a, what, a hole in the ground? I don't know what that's called. Like a Grand Canyon sort of thing. I realized it would look a lot more mysterious and just really cool and interesting to have that really dark fade off into the background. And I liked the way it looked a lot more than a river. Mainly though, I just didn't want it to take that blue away from the mountains. Just like with the space illustration, once everything was cut out and sewn on, it was looking really dull and I was kind of worried that it was going to be boring. But once I started to add on details, it became amazing. But just because I cut out our characters doesn't mean I'm not going to add an adorable Dennis. He's peeking around a cactus. Shameful plug, don't forget to get yourself a Dennis. <laughs> Links in the description. Okay, so back to our sewing. I taped everything down and oh boy, was there a lot to tape down. There was just so many pieces to this illustration. I love me a simple illustration, but I did just want to tackle more details. I also didn't want to sew everything on top of each other. I wanted to create a better sense of layers in the sense that I wanted the bushes to grow out of the ground. I wanted the rocks to be sticking out of the ground. So I cut holes into the ground and stuck those felt pieces out and then sewed little details around it to make it look like little ripples of dirt or sand just to add some texture and more visual interest. Once it was sewn down, I was really tempted to keep it very simple and have less details because as you guys know, I love simple illustrations, but I did want to see how much detail I could add into this one. And I'm really happy that I added all of these little rocks, pieces of grass. The little needles on the cacti are especially adorable. I think Dennis's face is probably my favorite detail of this whole illustration. He's just so cute, look at him. Peeking around the cactus, looking into the sky. What is he thinking? In the end, I didn't add that much detail if you take into consideration how much sewing and time goes into embroidery. This isn't technically an embroidery. I don't know what to call this. Is this an art form? I have no idea. I'm calling it a felt illustration because I don't know what else to call it. Either way, doesn't matter. I'm very happy with how this illustration turned out. This was a lot of fun, very time consuming, but a very fun and interesting outcome. 
Though in the end, and I knew this was going to happen eventually, I had so many layers of felt that my embroidery hoop couldn't close. So I will have to work on that. that is it for all three felt illustrations. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been wanting to do this for so long. Which of these three pieces is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to get yourself a Dennis plushie before they are all gone. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay golden. And now it is time to thank my amazing patrons for their amazing support. You guys are seriously awesome. Do you want coloring pages? Early access to my videos? A shout out in my video. Check out my Patreon by clicking the link in the description. Or, or don't? All right, see you later.